Hey guys, I'm here to do a book review on Rival by Sarah Bennett Wheeler. It's a debut novel for 2011. So this can go into the Story Sirens uh, debut novel challenge, debut author challenge. Um, yeah, I finished it today because I didn't go to work because I was having car issues and the kids were at their friends. So I had the whole day today by myself. Uh, my husband was working and yeah, so I just read this book. Um, it was actually a pretty decent book. It has 327 pages, and the words are actually pretty big, which is good because I like the words like that. Um, I might go ahead and read uh, the inside flap to you guys. Brooke, I don't like Catherine. Kath I don't like Catherine Pees. I could pretend everything's fine between us. I could be nice to her face, then trash her behind her back. But I think it's better to be honest. I don't like Catherine, and I'm not afraid to admit it. Catherine. I saw a commercial where singers used their voices to shatter glass, but the whole thing is pretty much a myth. The human voice isn't that strong. Human hatred is. Anybody who doubts that should feel the hate waves coming off of Brooke Dempsey. But I don't shatter. I'm not made of glass. Anyway, the parts that break aren't on the outside. Brooke and Catherine used to be best friends, until the night when Brooke ruthlessly turned on Catherine in front of everyone. Suddenly, Catherine was an outcast, and Brooke was Queen Bee. Now, as they prepare to face off one last time, each girl must come to terms with the fact that the person she hates most might just be the best friend she ever had. So, yeah, this book, obviously, is about rivals. Um, and as you see in the cover, those are piano keys behind there. Here, it's also about music. Um, Brooke and Catherine both sing, and they are both in the honors choir at school, um, and they both compete in singing. They ended up being friends. Um, they met through choir and their junior year, and they ended up being friends. Now, they're complete, they were complete opposites before. Um, like, they never thought, because uh, Brooke is, like, the popular girl, and Catherine's, like, the, the meek girl, the one that keeps to herself. She has one friend, uh, Matt, who she's been friends with since grade school. And so when Brooke befriends her and that they actually find out that they have more in common because they have this music that they love even though they're in choir honor choir together honors choir <clears throat> um Catherine is really serious about her music too and so is Brooke but all of Brooke's friends think that it's just silly stuff in that so she can't share any of that with her friends so that's the thing that kind of bonds um Brooke and Catherine together well, Brooke also has this best friend, Chloe, um, that she's been best fr friends with since I think it was sixth grade. And the story alternates between Brooke's point of view and Catherine's. It also goes back and forth between junior year um, and senior year because there's this big blow up between the two girls, between Catherine and Brooke, and it all happens at the end of junior year. So you have junior year where they're talking about when they first become friends and just how everything progresses and that all the way to the build up. And then you're looking at senior year on some parts, where, which is the present time. And there is this big sinking competition that they're both accepted into because only certain people are accepted to compete. And so they're both competing, and by senior year, they're not friends anymore. So senior year is all about this competition and um, still some rivalry going on, just not as strong as it was in junior year. Um, so, yeah, and Chloe is very, very controlling. Um, when you get to know the characters, Brooke isn't the typical character, rich girl character that you read about in books that is spoiled and just mean and all that. No, she's not like that at all once you get to know her. Um, yeah, she's rich, yeah, rich, yeah, she's spoiled, yeah, she's popular, but she really has a depth to her. She really has, she's really a kind girl. And a lot of the things like homecoming and all that that you would think that especially the popular people should be into, she's not really into. Uh, Brooke really just wants to concentrate on her singing. But like I said, her friends just don't get that. So I think she puts on a front more for her friends' benefits. And Catherine, who kept to herself, 
and then like I said, uh, her and Brooke ended up becoming friends. Chloe, who was kind of in the backlight then, um, the background or whatever, I think she started to get jealous. So she started befriending Catherine, and she, Chloe's very manipulative, and she started, her wheels started turning, and she started coming up with all these little plans and they had, and just, yeah, so Catherine, the, feeling the power of get, being in with the in crowd, and being accepted and invited to these things that you never were before and friends with these people that you never thought you'd be friends with before. It goes to her head, like it's typical in any book you read about the lower person, you know, going into the in crowd. It goes to their head. And she starts to take advantage of things. And before you know it, something escalates, something happens that shouldn't have happened, something said that shouldn't have been said. And her and Brooke get into a fight. And so then they're not friends anymore. And Catherine shunned. This book, of course, it follows that pattern. You know, the unpopular girl, like I said, befriended by the popular girl, gets in the popular crowd. Um, goes to her head. Things get out of control. Blah, blah, blah. But you get to know these characters, which I liked. Um, you get to know Catherine. You get to know Brooke. You also get to know Chloe. And, like I said, Brooke's not your, your typical rich bitch, spoiled brat. She had more to her, which I really liked. Catherine, um, even though stuff started to go to her head uh, when she got into the in crowd, you still seen that there was still some part of the old Catherine left in her. Um, and she didn't turn into a snotty girl. Um, so I liked that. When you fast forward to senior year, and it gets closer to the competition, they both start to realize things. And they both start to realize about this fight and why it got started and just how silly it was. And they start to realize things about themselves and about each other. And Brooke really is developed in her character, uh, Brooke's character. I really, really liked that. Um, very good character development on Brooke, even Catherine. When it comes to the end, where there's this competition, someone wins the competition. I'm not going to say who, obviously. Um, but you have both Brooke, who has issues going on in her life, and then you have Catherine, who has issues going on in her life. And it's funny, because the issues that Catherine has, Brooke doesn't have. And the issues that Brooke has, Catherine doesn't have. So, you know, you may look at somebody and think they have it all because they have something you don't have, but you probably have something that they don't have, you know? So they could be looking at you, too, thinking that you have it all. And that's kind of what this story was about, too. I guess trying to show you that grass isn't always greener on the other side. So that was really good, too. And in the end, who won this? I actually thought it was going to be the other person, and it wasn't. And then when I thought about it, the person that did win it, I think, probably did need it more. So, um, yeah, it was a good book. <laughs> it was a good book. And sorry that I did all that rambling talking about it, but it was just, it really had a lot of meaning in it. You know, you really, you just learn a lot and about yourself, about others. Um, I liked it. Of course, you had the, the mean girls in there, too. Um, and you also learn later on that some things that happened weren't actually the cause of somebody. And, yeah, so, Rival by Sarah Bennett Wheeler. Well written and beautiful cover. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.